The following trailer only spoils season one of Stranger Things. The bad men will get us if we show you season two before it's on Blu-ray. Today's episode is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. From the streaming service that's a Game of Thrones away from ruling all of television. And a directing duo who's like Tarantino, if he referenced films you've actually seen, comes the show that made the entire world ask, hey, have you finished Stranger Things yet? Stranger Things. No, I don't want to skip intro. This song is awesome. You love the 80s. You love Steven Spielberg. You love most of Stephen King. Huh? Oh! 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 Now you're all grown up and the real world is terrible. So escape to a slick bingeable series you'd watch at double speed if it meant you could get it into your brain sooner. Must revisit childhood, escape horrible present day. Visit the idyllic suburb of Hawkins, Indiana a small town where nobody seems to pay any mind to the giant high-security top-secret lab with hundreds of employees when a middle schooler goes missing. A loser's club full of goonies will band together to recreate the cutest version of the hangover you've ever seen, where one character disappears. Where is Doc? Where's Will? One character is missing teeth, one character is cool and skeptical, and one character is a dangerous liability to the rest of the group. Is she all there, like mentally? Something seriously wrong with her, like wrong in the head. Will may be missing, but there's plenty of other strange things to go around, like Mike's sister trapped in a love triangle between two haircuts, Will's mom who copes with her son's loss by getting really into arts and crafts, Hopper, the cop on a one-man quest to cold cock every guard in town. Yeah, I've got Jim Hopper here. And fan favorite Barb, the most talked about character with the least amount of screen time since Boba Fett. Look, I get it. She's awkward and she didn't deserve to die, but how about the dude at the beginning who got shot just for helping a lost child? Where's the hashtag justice for Benny, huh? Suit up with 2016's breakout character slash Halloween costume, Eleven. She's one part Carrie, one part the kid from Boyhood, and one part reminder that Eggo Waffles is part of a balanced breakfast. Watch as she expands her vocabulary outside the secret lab she was raised in. What is friend? Spit? Promise? Snowball? Mouth breather? Discovering the joy of friendship, family, and fun new ways to murder people. Oh wow, she just straight up exploded their brains, didn't she? Can we just cut back to her doing something cute again? Oh, we love you, Eleven. Please don't get caught up with a group of Chicago street toughs in a standalone season two episode that, while providing a much needed arc for your character, also completely derails the show's narrative momentum. I mean, just spitballing here. Journey to the Upside Down, an alternate dimension that's just like our own, if it were covered in snot ropes and dandruff. It's a dangerous world that can only be crossed into by the spooky vagina, or this portal in the woods, or these Christmas lights? Or this wall? Or floating in saw water? I don't know. This is crazy! This is crazy! This is crazy! There lives the Demigorgon. A monster who is either an invisible, unkillable, lightning-fast predator, or if the story demands it, a slow-moving golem who gets wrecked by a 16-year-old with a baseball bat. I hope they don't do what aliens did and replace the big monster with a bunch of smaller, easier-to-kill versions. Again, just spitballing. So hop on the back pegs and ride along with one of Netflix's biggest hits that could have coasted by on pure nostalgia, but goes the extra mile by adding a tight story with a great young cast who better crank out the next seasons fast, because if you think the Demigorgon is relentless, wait until puberty is on your tail. Clock's ticking, Dustin. Son of a bitch. Starring nerds, bikes, hugs, Slender Man. More nosebleeds than a horned up anime character. Winona Face. But this award from you, who take your craft seriously and earnestly believe, like me, that great acting can change the world. Will! 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 
Mike's idiot dad, Loki stealing the show. I hope you're enjoying your chicken, Ted. What did I do? What did I do? Waffles. Got your breakfast? Stop right there! Eat! Being able to talk to Mike's mom. I want you to feel like you can talk to me. Nancy. What? You can talk to me. Joyce, if you need anything, Ted and I are here for you. Conflicted Nancy face. Blinking lights. Lights! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Oh my god. Eleven looks. I understood that reference. Like Professor X. It's from Lord of the Rings. More like a Yoda. Like Michael Myers. That's like R2-D2 going to fight Darth Vader. These shots from E.T. Jaws. Halloween. E.T. Again. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Stand By Me. An American Werewolf in London. And E.T. Screedo. And then this is Hammerhead. His name's Yoda. He can use the force to move things with his mind. And the only way pop culture knows how to explain alternate dimensions. You create a doorway. And the spacecraft passes through the gateway. So you can take a shortcut through a higher dimension. Nostalgic things. You know what's gonna suck. When TV shows get nostalgic for 2017 and show kids dabbing on a hoverboard like it wasn't the worst time ever. Today's episode is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch to America's best unlimited network. Lego, my ego. Another day, another Doug. Tomatoes are just weird apples. Your hair is winter fire. January embers. My heart burns there too.